Hello, it's Sarah. I am working on a little angel today. I have her all base coated. This is a Maxine Thomas piece. It comes from the Country Primitives 8 book. Um, Angelica Angel. I left off the Christmassy stuff so that she could just be all the time. But right now, I'm going to get out some light buttermilk and I'm going to put checks on her little um, underdress and these little um, areas on her sleeves. So I wanted to just show you that. I took a tip of paint, wet my brush. I'm using a number six flat, and this is one of my new brushes, the Josonia Sure Touch. Um, enjoying these brushes. I do like them. I think I would get them again. Um, it is I think going to work here. Now, I, she may have used a stencil. I mean, I assume she did use a stencil, to be honest with you. I want to make sure when I do the bottom that I do it very straight. Um, but I'm just going to use this and show you one way of getting the res this, this checker pattern on her little sleeve. So I want it to be nice and thin. So again, I always pull from the puddle and mix a little bit of water. I'm going to get a little bit more water on the tip of my bristles. And I want it to be really smooth, not gloppy, so that when I put the brush down, it it's going to make a check. I just want to be able to make the let the brush do the work. So let's come over to the piece and I'm going to come right into these sleeves here and I'm just going to start on one end and pull a check and just save about the same amount of room I'm flipping the brush because I cut I just want that nice chisel and oh boy kinda ran out of room but I'm just her dress is light buttermilk so I just let it go over to the side so see how that does the trick and by the time it's all shaded and um, it's not that important that you have to get crazy over it. So I'm going to do this second row. Just put my brush down and pick it up. I flipped it and just let the brush do the work. And now she has checks on her arm sleeves. I'm going to just turn this and do the same thing. Actually, let me turn it this way so I don't put my hand in the wet paint. And I can tell that I'm not opaque over here. That doesn't matter um, because, like I said, I'm going to shade everything. So I'm just going to start on this end. How about that? Put, and because her dress it happens to be the same color, I'm not worried about going over lines and stuff unless I get it on the blue. So I'm just going to pull a check. Make and just I'm just eyeballing and spacing it approximately the same width as the check itself. And I'm just going to go right there. I went right over the edge, which is awesome. Just going to load again, make sure my brush is nice and loaded, and start here and pull the check on the other side. done. It already starts to look cuter. Oh my gosh. All right, so I'm going to do this part of her underdress. And I think this is going to be a little trickier. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a line. Sorry. Yes, this is smart. Because that way I have a jumping off point um, where I know my checks will be straight. Once I get this line on here, and I mean it's not... I'm just lining up one of the lines there. So I'm just going to make a line. And this is with um, chalk pencil. I'm going to get my brush again. And I'm just going to load it right from that same spot. But I'm going to start. Hmm. I think I'm going to go on the bottom of the line first. Oh boy. My bird. Tell you if I'm talking, she wants to be in on it. Just making sure this is, if it's loaded right, I won't have a problem when I go to the piece. So I just want to make sure everything's good. See, there's a little extra water here. I want to wipe that off because it'll drip down onto the piece. So let me just start. 
right here um, below the line. It's not going to be perfect at all, but it is fun. I've made checks like this before, all different sizes, because depending on the size of the brush, this works. Now, I do have a little, here's a way you can do this. I have a post-it right here. So I'm just going to put this up against the edge right here. And then when I pull this check, it won't go on the blue. And I'm going to go to the other side. Kiwi! What are you doing? That's her little smooch smooch noise. Kiwi! She can fly, you know. I haven't clipped her wings in a while because when I did it last time, I did it wrong. And she had a weird wing for a while. Um, it doesn't hurt them. It's like clipping their, oh gosh, I'm not even in the shot. Like clipping their nails or when we clip our nails. All right, so now I'm going to continue. I'm going to use this post-it and just continue. I'll move it around. But I'm going to make another check right here. And then, let's see. Hmm. It's going to be harder, but I'm going to put it here and I'll just get it off of the Q-tip. Maddie, do you, can you bring Kiwi to me or no? Yeah, Yay! Because she's such a brat that you know, everyone's afraid to pick her up because she's just a brat and she will bite you. She bites me all the time. She's a brat. Did you get her? <gasps> you got her, Matt? You're so brave. Not with my finger, of course. Oh, come here, booty. <laughs> okay, thank you, Matt. So, um, now she'll stop peeping because she's with me. So this is my technique, and it's fun, especially when you have a nice brush like this that's, like, nice and chisely. And remember, this is not, um, this is an extra, like, little detail. It's not something that you need to worry too much about. Hopefully, um, oops, did I just spit on that? Uh, so yeah, and if you get it on the blue, your handy dandy Q-tip, but you get the idea. So I am going to be painting this little angel today, and I'm just wondering, oh boy, I'm getting crazy. See, I need to make sure I stay even. If you guys want to see me do it, a lot of you have been commenting that you're happy I'm doing the decorative painting, and um, it's just that in real time, it isn't a fast, I'm a pretty fast painter too, but it's not a fast process. And um, if you don't mind, I mean those of you that don't want to watch it, don't watch it. That's that's the good part. So, I mean I could, I think I'll post a couple more painting videos from this project. Maybe I won't do the whole entire angel. Um, because I have a base coating video from the last project I did when I did my little uh, scarecrow. It was so cute. And he's up on my mantle with all the other fall projects I've been working on. Um, I don't know. I decided to do her first because it was fewer colors. Like, I got her base coated yesterday pretty easily. And, um, but I want to do that little Raggedy Ann brush box pattern. Just going to put her on a, um, a piece of wood too, like a similar surface, just a So this is where my serenity comes in, you guys, because when you are focused on this the way I am here, 
it's like meditation to me anyway and um, it feels very peaceful and calm sometimes I'll put music on or the TV in the background but I, I kind of do need it quiet because then I can focus better I'm not the type you know they say when you put music on it opens up your left brain or something like that like um, I think it feels better when I don't have a lot going on, when it's just quiet. I like it like that. And that's it, you guys. Let's pull away and see what we got. Who needs a stencil, right? Love it. So that's that. Let me see. I think I'm going to go away. Um... Well, I'll, you know what, I'll shade the wings because that's the first. This is, her hair is just undercoated. I'm going to go all the way up. But I can do the wings. That's the first direction. It says, um, I based everything. And then it says, uh, checks are light buttermilk. The wings, shade with Mississippi mud, then dark chocolate down each side to the hair and arms. So here and here. And then highlight the outside with light buttermilk. And then there's stitches. So this gets light buttermilk. So that's really simple. So I think I'll do that. Okay. And the thing, Maxine is the one who developed these mop brushes that I use all the time. So, and I've taken two classes with her. So her style of floating is very cool. I put my own little spin on it, but um, I do use hers too. So Mississippi Mud, she said. Look at that color. Ooh, that is so cool. And then dark chocolate, which I don't have dark chocolate, so I think I'm going to use um, like burnt sienna or something. I don't have dark chocolate. Maybe I'll find a different color, but let's just go ahead and do Mississippi mud first. Now, I'm going to get a clean piece of palette paper because it's floating time. And when I float, I like to use a palette uh, paper palette. It is, this one happens to be by Strathmore. It's a smooth poly coated surface and it's great for loading your brush. I'm going to put a little bit of this Mississippi mud down and I'm probably going to use a decent sized brush. I don't think I'm going to go with my um, one inch, although it's a three quarter inch. Let's see. I think I'll have more control with, um, I could use this one, the 5 eighths. I think I am. I'm going to see what this feels like. This is my, the old brand I used to like from um, AC Moore. It's the American Painter Angle Brush. I like to float with an angle brush. So I'm going to corner load it with the pointy part of the brush. So I just stick the paint, get a little tip of that, and then I put the bristles on the surface. So you don't want just the tip, you want all the bristles. And I put the paint down. And I pull and push. So I pull down like this, but then I'm going slightly into it, and then I back out a little bit. Then I want to go this way. So what happens is I have the darkest color over here and it graduates down to water and you can see the water bubbles there. The brush is splitting a little bit. I have a random hair here so we'll see. If I don't like this I can take it off with a baby wipe but I think we're going to be okay. It is splitting which I don't love but let's just go to the piece. I put the corner where I want the darkest paint right in there and then I'm going to back out. I don't want to come over the line. Wait, I hit the hair already. I'm such a heavy hand. Now, Maxine pre-wets the surface. So she would have put water down on the surface first and then come in with her brush loaded and then she can pull her float across the water. So I, I still have water on the surface because you just saw me load it and I just tap it with my mop. It got messy over here. 
So I'm just going to take my Q-tip and kind of go across the blue, get it off the blue. And the hair won't matter as much because we're going to put a bunch of strokes all over that. But, I mean, it definitely looks shaded. I'm going to use the other, my other brush, my brand new brush. This is the Joe Sonia. It's a half inch. And I'm going to do this side. And I think I'll be able to still get it to walk out as far. We're going to go over this again darker. So I wanted this to come out a little further. And the idea is this color would be out further and then the darker color would, so you still even get more graduation of color. So let me flip it this way. And this time I'm just going to start here and go along her hairline on this side. Same thing. Corner load the brush. Same thing. I'm going right back to this runway. And I go up and down, back and forth. So, But you never want this edge to get paint, just water on that edge. So I'm going to stick this corner <coughs> right in here. Kind of pull it down. All the bristles on the surface because I need the water as well. And like I said, if I was Maxine, I would have just put some water down on here so that the paint moves. But I generally can get away without it. I generally have plenty of water in my brush. Now, she's a freaking expert at this, I'm telling you. She knows her stuff when it comes to this floating stuff, I'm telling you. My nose is itchy. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm going to make money or something? So I definitely got more color on this side. This hardly is showing up. So I'm, I'll come back with my bigger brush on here. I want to just do something right here. I don't see any color. Yeah, like there's a difference. can hardly see it here, and I see it there so much better. <coughs> oh, maybe that's why my nose was itching. So, that is called a float. I'm going to do... I think I'll start, on, I'll do on the other side with the bigger brush. And I'll start here and I'll pull it down to here. And I'm a pity pat floater as well. I don't do it all in one movement. I do it in pity pat movements. So, there's more than one way to do this, you guys. Don't worry. So I put the brush up against the edge of the wing. Oops, got it on her shirt. And I will clean that up, but it's not ideal that I'm being so sloppy. But see, I have so much water and paint. Oops, I got it on her hair again. Don't mind. So much water and paint on my brush that I made it all the way across that wing. And that's how I like to float. I like to do a nice dark float. So that big brush is coming in handy on here. I just want to clean up the shirt a little bit, which it's going to be highlighted, I'm sure. But I can get this right up against that edge. The hair, I mean, we're going to overstroke it so it's not that big a deal. Right here, I don't want it to be on the shirt either. And look how nice that looks up here now much darker I guess you can't always see it on camera so I'm going to come back with the same brush and do this little section here which I probably could have done the whole thing in one shot like I'm going to have to pick a color that's going to be dark chocolate um, I'm trying, I don't think burnt umber is going to do it I think dark chocolate is a little darker than burnt umber I will figure it out. And I'm going to take this, set it right next, like this way. See, not like this. Even though the float starts there, I want it to come from the edge. So you have to put the water there. I can walk it back a little. And then go, I'm going to really try and stay up against her shirt without getting it on the shirt and push it right into that corner 
I think I did it. And when you pity pat, you do get those little, um, like, stop and start marks. So it's it's personal preference. I just use a mop a lot, so I know that I'm going to be able to um, feather or feather them out with my mop. So I don't. I used to float all in one um, line. I need to do that again. Something about right here bothers me. It like shadowed itself there. I don't know. But this side looks great. And then light buttermilk, she said, right, for the highlight. Yep, light buttermilk. I'm just going to do the same exact thing. Maxine's pieces, this is her technique. She goes base coat and float. That's what you're going to be doing if you create one of her pieces. So you're going to have to get this technique figured out. Um, that's my experience anyway. That's how I see it. Just loading this big brush up again and I'm going to stick this color again. I start with the edge of my brush up against the wing and I'm pushing down coming up and then I'm going to do the same thing on this one push down I think I should start all the way I don't know let me see I think I like that I could have reloaded. I got to get the, it off the blue. But I could have reloaded and gotten fresh paint every time, but I'm a little lazy when it comes to that. And um, sometimes I'll just keep going and as far as I can. So it's your piece. Take your time and do it how you want to do it. When I'm on camera, sometimes I feel um, I'm not as careful as I could be because I'm trying to, you know, stay out of the shot and do it quickly-ish. So, um, same thing with a class, and I've said this before, you guys, I'm repeating myself, but when you're in a class, your work is never as good as when you're not in the class. Um, it's just weird that way you can't you can't you're trying to keep up so you know it's just the way it is in a class um, I want to fix this but I'll just go ahead and go in with the white real quick or the light buttermilk then I'm gonna have to find something and I'm gonna show you the difference it makes when you go in with a second color so I'm gonna just again my the angle brush goes right up against that side and I go across and I can pivot and come up this way but then I pivot and put it stick let the water kinda of, I don't know it's sometimes you'll get a water line why is my paper towel over there I just keep going right back doing the same thing water blot paint blot even you know just get that consistency make sure you like what's going on on your palette paper or you're not going to like what's going on on the piece and see I have so much paint and water on here I'm going to keep going and I'm just going to leave it like that I think that's showing up pretty good. Hi, Kiwi. You are so sweet. She plays in my hair. You can definitely see that. I got to go back here, though. Something is bugging me about. I don't know. Maybe I'll just fix it with the... Let me look at it. I have to go back up. Let me look at it and see. Uh... I could get it a little darker here. <clears throat> My runway had white in it in the path, so I have to do a different one. 
<clears throat> I think it's just the fall. Uh, fall might give me a little congestion. I'm sorry. So I'm going to stick my brush right here and pull out a little and just fill this in. Because it would be darkest in there and then come around here. Good. That looks good. Do I want to do the same thing on the other side? I think the other side looks pretty darn good. So that's how her wings are looking so far. And then I'm going to come back with the dark chocolate once I figure out what it is. All right, so this is what I do. When I don't have a color, I Google it. Deco art, dark chocolate. I find a swatch. Look, here it is. So this is the swatch. It's... I have traditional burnt umber and asphaltum, which she already uses asphaltum as a color in her project, but I think this is looking pretty good. I'm going to go with that, the traditional burnt umber, and just, I don't know why she picked dark chocolate, but <clears throat> I think traditional burnt umber will just be just fine. And I'm going to go down in size, going to go to my little bit smaller brush because I don't want it to go as wide out. Although I do feel like darkening this up. But let me just stay over here for now. I'm going to use this half inch angle. My new Josonia half inch angle. Which I do like. I like these brushes. They're very good. Oops. Why is that? Um, so. put. Oh. I guess I got to put this out. So here we go. I put a little on my palette. Corner load put it down and just push the color back and forth. I go fast. Probably not even in the shot. There we go. But I have plenty of water on here to make it nice and slick. And let's see how this goes. I'll do it from a distance so you guys can watch me from afar. I really like when I get it dark up in the crevices and just go right back to the runway I'm just gonna keep going I'm gonna pull this And just see if I can tickle it out a little bit. Get rid of the jaggly lines. That is dark. I like it. And you can tell the difference from this side. This has more definition. So I'm just going to do that on the other side. starting at the bottom. Let's see. I kind of got it on her dress. I don't like that. I think sometimes I mop so crazy that I push it over there too. I'm a crazy mopper. So I'm just going to sit that. I'm just going to go right down the arm. The sleeve. I'm not worrying about walking it out too much because this is just for definition. And I'm going to come back. Oops. I hope my head's not in the shot because I am super focused on what I'm doing. That has a lot of color right here.
I think her wings are done. I could probably darken up a little bit more of the... I'm going to just take this smaller brush and I'm going to do a little bit more light ivory. And just in the tips, like I'm just going to brighten up right here. So just right here. Man, I'm going out of lines. It's really making me mad. Because I'm just being too careless. And... Again, I went right out of lines. It's annoying. I'm just gonna try and I think it's because my head is so far back. Like when I'm doing this, just me and my piece, I'm right on top of it. So if my head gets in the shot, I sorry. I sorry. And I got a little puddle here. I don't you don't always have to mop. I just am a pity patter so it kind of leaves those little um stop and go marks so I have to I just like to blend them in. So this looks a little not bright enough for me. Kiwi, are you saying something? What are you saying? And like if I just do it and don't talk about it, it actually goes a little better too. And there we go. You can go back and forth as many times as you want. It's your piece. And then she has these little stitch lines, see? Right here, stitch, stitch, stitch. They're just on the underside, which I could put them wherever I want, but I, I'm going to follow hers. And that's the wings. That's all she wants us to do with those. So I'm going to grab my liner brush. I'm going to load it with the dark burnt umber or whatever it's called. Traditional, actually. Dark chocolate. I don't have dark chocolate. Maybe I should. You know, they're not um, making paint right now. The company is, I think it's only making a certain, you know, percentage of their colors. It's not making all the colors. So, um, I am I always use what I have. I have so many bottles of paint. So it's not like I'm going to go get dark chocolate when I have all these other browns, but... A little, a little shaky. I had a, I haven't even had my second cup of coffee. These are the little details, though. That okay. This goes all the way down from here, and you can trace this on if you if you're not comfortable and you want it to look exactly well. It'll never even be as exact because you can't trace it. Oh, I was supposed to go. Just I'm just leaving it like that. You can't really even notice them. They're just subtle. And I'll do the same thing to the other side. Uh, and that's it. So that's all I wanted to share for right now, you guys. I feel like um, kind of doing the the videos in portions like this gives you, you don't have to watch a whole big video. Um, wait, I gotta think of what I'm doing. Because I'm doing it in the opposite direction. Um, and you can just, uh, you know what you're gonna get, kind of thing. Cute. Very cute. I'll be back, you guys. Thanks for watching.